Welcome Flip Clock fans. This is an advertisement for a Panasonic RC7469. This is from a newspaper in 1969. The clock retailed for $59.95, which is about $424 in today's dollars. 1969, well, that's when the second moon landing was going on. That's Apollo 12. That's why they call these space age clocks. And here you see the clock has arrived in Flip Clock Fan Studios. This came from a member of flipclockfans.com and I told him I'd take a look at their clock. So the video may be a little longer than normal, but the person wants to see what the clock's all about. So there's the name plate for the Panasonic. A little scratch on the bottom. I'm just doing a quick once over. We see the uh, name plate there is missing. The wood panels are in decent shape. Those are actually um, plywood. It's laminated plywood. So they're, they're in pretty good shape. Overall, the clock's a little bit dirty. What I do is I'm going to do a quick check on the minutes to make sure that all the minute tiles are in place. Those are, are sometimes missing. I won't go through and do the hours. That's just going to take too long. We'll energize here and see how the functions are. And from what the uh, person told me, that's not working very good. So we'll take a look and see. I think the light is working. It's hard to tell. All right, we should be getting some, some music here. And we can tell that it's not coming in very well. That's the tone there, like treble and bass. Well, it serves for treble and bass. You see the light that is on, on the dial there for the FM. Okay. second knob done there that's the fm am selector and that's got to be the problem as well as the volume it's going to need to be cleaned and probably will fix up our problem just fine we'll go ahead and do a check of the alarm all right and um that's supposed to go to uh, sound to music. And there's the buzzing alarm. Everything seems to be functioning. We just need to clean it up on the inside and on the outside. And what I've done is I've removed these two screws in the back. That's the only two screws you need to get the clock open. And after that, we have to remove the knobs. This one, you have to be particularly careful. There's a metal tab there. You see how that tried to slide off? People will lose that often. That'll get lost. The rest are simple knobs that pull straight up. Sometimes they can be tighter than others. And these are coming off fairly well. And we just lift up from the back carefully because we've got a speaker attached. It's a pretty good sized speaker. I think that's a four inch speaker and it gives really good sound if the thing's working. If the speaker's in good shape, we'll check that out later. Now there's the earphone thing. It comes out the back. We'll have to unscrew that carefully to get that case off of there. We're going to remove the case and all this stuff. There's the motor. That's the uh, what I call the whirly gig. It's not a moving. I'm going to try to get it started with this uh, pencil here. And you can just feel it's not moving. But we got to get all this stuff out of here so we can clean up the case real well and get to that motor, that's not gonna turn. Sometimes you could get them started that way, but often these older clocks, the oil I think dries out and it needs to get clean. So these two screws here are for, um, for the clock mechanism that has a lock washer and a regular washer. These older clocks had a lot of washers and 
as you get uh, later on in the uh, manufacture of these clocks, you'll notice they, they stopped using all the washers, likely to simplify the, the manufacture. You see this, this is a little loose. It's not wanting to come all the way off. This bezel, we don't want it to come off. We don't want to bend it or anything. So I'll probably glue that back. There's the nameplate missing. All right, so we've got the, the motor out. This is the uh, little cardboard thing that covers this light right there. Now to get the rest of this clock out, we've got about five screws in different places. They are actually red tinged, red colored. Down there, there. So all the ones that have got a little bit of reddish on them will come out. There's others that don't need to come out. And you really don't want to take those out if you don't have. So we've removed all this. I've put the speaker in a bag to keep it safe. This is a 5.5 millimeter socket, which fits this really well. I took the shroud off there of the motor. That's what I was taking off. So we got really good access to the to the rotor here where the where the gig is. And so I get a feel for it to see if it's if it's bent loose. Now you can see it's not it's not rotating very well. It feels gummed up. Now right there in the middle, there's an axle. It's about the size of a pencil leg. That's all that's it's that it's spinning on. And I usually drop some oil right down there, try to get to that axle to loosen it up. What I've got here is REM oil. This is a gun oil. It's a very light oil and it's it's good for cleaning. So the first thing I want to do is to go ahead and just try if hitting that axle with a drop of this oil is all it needs. Now I dropped it on the outside so you can see how fast it drops down and how light it is, how light of an oil it is. It don't, you don't need to drop it on the outside. That That's a brass bushing that just connects the axle on there. It's that oil on the outside won't do a thing, and you don't need a lot of excess oil. The windings are underneath this spinning thing. The spinning thing itself is magnetized, but there's no, there's not a lot of mechanics. It's just an axle. So I'm doing a lot of spinning here, and it's not, it's not helping loosen it. Now I've energized it, and you might see it creeping along there. So that's a good sign, and a little kick counterclockwise gets it spinning and sometimes I might just let that roll for a while but when I stop it you see it, it grows back to creeping so it's going to need better cleaning than than what we've done so far the lights working around and the clock's flipping just fine so we're going to go ahead and use alcohol. You want to get the highest percentage of alcohol you can. It's just better that way. I could take the motor off. I really don't want to mess with that. I think I can get good access the way it is. The gearbox is there and there's further gears in there. I don't want to get those all stripped out of all the oil that's on there. A little bit of oil doesn't hurt there, a light oil. So I'm just flushing this out with alcohol and then giving it a good spin to try to clean that out. Now the tape on the whirly gig there, if you get it wet and start manhandling it, it will get messed up. I'm trying not to touch that. When that alcohol dries, it'll be just like it was before. I'm just going to keep spinning it. Now it is an operation indicator. You really can't see it that well on the outside of the clock. You can use a flashlight and see it. Okay, you noticed I energized and it started right up. So already you can tell things are going to go well. We just have to find the right kind of lubricant to finish this off with so that we don't end up getting stuck again. The rim oil, I don't think it's going to be the, the right stuff. Um, I've been recommended by another restorer uh, to use this full synthetic motor oil. They say it's long lasting. You get the drop down in there, you get it worked in, and it should be good for years. So I've got a cap full of this stuff. We can't just pour it in there. So I'm going to see, get a feel for the consistency of this stuff. It's, compared to the other stuff, it's fairly thick. I'm going to get a drop and aim it behind that hole to drop down where the axle's at. So it's a simple mesh just on the other side of the metal. So I've got to drop it down in there. Once it goes down and hits that area where I know it's at, 
I'll give it a, a few spins. I know it hit because I can feel I can feel the resistance to it a little bit. It's getting down in there. I'm going to energize and just kind of let it run and, and work its way into the whole situation. And I might want to prop it up like this so that uh, it has more of a tendency to run the length of the axle. So I'll use my little rock here. This is a little piece of rock from the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, which it's illegal to take that out of the park, by the way. So we're just going to let it sit. And just let it do its magic. This is, again, this is something you can use. You can use a clock oil. There's different things you can use. Plain WD-40 is not a good idea. It, a good, it's a good idea to clean it out with WD-40, but you need something more lasting like that, synthetic oil. And you can see, I stop it with my finger, it starts right back up. It looks like this is going to be the solution. It's running just fine. Now we've got to turn our attention to the other problems we talked about. We've got a switch here. That's the volume. This is the tone. And this is the uh, selector switch, which I don't think is a problem at all. I want to get some contact cleaner in there to clean out that potentiometer. That's what that is. This is uh, some CRC electrical contact. Sorry, I got some tape on there hiding it. But you can use things like deoxit or anything that's a plastic safe contact cleaner. Now there's a hole in there, and I've squeezed that in there, and I'm going to work that back and forth multiple times. I did the same with the tone. This switch here is the one I think is the problem. The biggest part of the problem. I put some tissue back there and so I don't get this stuff all over the board, which won't, probably won't hurt it. It just will look unsightly. So you work that back a lot and do, uh, do that several times. Now later I took a Q-tip and used plain water, not alcohol. You want to just use plain water, don't need soap. I'm actually going to clean every single tile in this clock to get it bright and shiny. And that does take some time, so I won't show you all that. I'll spare you. It's worth it. Okay, this is the end result. We've got the clock all back together. As you can tell, it's uh, loud. Loud and clear. All right. Now we're going to set the alarm. Okay, there was the buzzer. And there it is, alarm into radio. That's it. The Panasonic RC7469, the Cameron. You see I've replaced that uh, Panasonic. I had one laying around, believe it or not, from my previous restorations. And so here it is. It really is a, a beautiful clock. It is one of the more high-end clocks of the day. Looking great. Well, thanks for taking the time. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.